How do I upscale thee? Let me count the ways. In OpenArt's ultimate upscale, that is. OpenArt, who's graciously sponsoring this video, has recently made some changes to their ultimate upscale options. We now have three modes, precise, refined, and creative. Precise gives us higher resolution, but keeps everything looking pretty much the same. Give it an image that's 1024 pixels square and it'll upscale it to 4096 pixels square and it'll come out cleaner and just looking higher quality, but there won't be any obvious changes to the content or composition. The refined upscale mode in open art will add some subtle details, maybe some texture, maybe some lines if we're working with a human looking face. It doesn't take wild creative liberties with your image, but it does make some enhancements. And you can adjust that enhancement level using this slider anywhere from zero all the way up to one and to any one hundredth in between. Creative upscale is for increasing the resolution, but it also allows the AI to take some creative liberties with the image. Now you have version two and version one. Two is the newer version and the one that I prefer. Version one is the older version and might be worth checking out if you're just not getting what you want out of version two or if you tend to like the styles that you get out of version one better. With the creative upscale, you can also adjust this enhancement level on the scale from zero all the way up to one, and the increments are in one hundredths everywhere between. Now, creative upscale also lets you add a prompt. It's optional, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can use this prompt box to describe what your output image is supposed to look like. Now, this isn't a spot where we want to describe a completely different image than the one that we're trying to upscale. For instance, if we were trying to upscale an image of a dog, we probably wouldn't want to type in a prompt that says, a rocket ship flying through a marshmallow space galaxy. For that, we should probably be creating a new image. There's a couple of ways that you can get to ultimate upscale. If you're on the home page and you want to bring in an image that you've created somewhere else, or maybe you've got something off your camera roll, an actual like real photograph that you took or something, you can click the ultimate upscale button right here on the home page, which will bring you to the ultimate upscale page. If you're on the image creation page and you've just created an image, you can just click on that image to the right of the image, come down here and and click on ultimate upscale. It'll bring that image into the ultimate upscaler for you. What I really wanna show you today is the difference between these modes and what they come up with. I've been working with several different images here. I have my doggo, I have my monster, I have a design, a landscape, and of course, since realistic photo looking things are kind of my thing, I have a young woman here taking a selfie. This is the original image of her. It is 1024 by 1024. I created it with the flux realism model and my prompt is natural silly selfie of a 25 year old girl next door. Bonus tip, I found that when I'm trying to create an image of a female that doesn't look like a supermodel, including the words girl next door in my prompt seems to help a lot. Here's that image after ultimate upscale using the precise mode. It's gone from 1024 by 1024 to 4096 by 4096. You can drop this down and see the original image that was used, but we're going to use this handy dandy slider so that we can see the differences sort of overlay one another. Anything to the left of this line is the original image and anything to the right of this line is what the upscale has done. As we move our slider across to reveal the original versus the upscaled, I don't think there'd be any doubt that this is the same person or even the same image. I don't think anything that's happened here in the detail changes the composition or the subject really. Pay attention to her eyes. In the original version, they're a little bit blurry, but in the upscaled version, the precise upscale, they come out much clearer. It didn't really change them. It didn't take her from having, you know, brown eyes to blue eyes. It didn't give her a third eye. It just improved the quality of the image by making them nice, crisp, clean, not blurry. It's the same thing up in her eyebrows and down in her teeth. Notice it just took away some of the blur and made it a little bit more crisp. And this is why precise upscale is great for photos of people or things that you can't just be willy nilly changing parts of. Now let's switch over to the refined upscale. This gave us a slightly different resolution. Remember we started with 1024 square and the precise upscale gave us 4096. Refined gave us 2896. That's still a lot of pixels. I have the creativity set for this at 0.25. It did make some minor changes. Notice the freckles that we have on her forehead and nose and the upscale version. It moved a couple of those and changed them around. It also seems to have changed the skin tone a little bit, especially at her nose and her cheeks. 
And if we take a look in the background, it also makes some minor changes there. Look at this light switch over behind her. And of course it swapped out the paintings that were behind her on the right. And it also updated the hinges in the door or whatever she's standing in. Minor changes here that would be great if you have a character that you're trying to stick with, a photo of someone that you need to stay pretty consistent, but you want to refine the look of that image a little bit. Now, what if we take that creativity up to 0.5 instead of 0.25? I'm really paying attention to her eyes and her face here. And this time, like look at this eye, which would be her left eye. As I move across it, it looks like it really has changed the structure of her eye. Would that still pass for the same person? Probably. What if we take the refine up to 0.75? But we are definitely refining and making some changes. I still think this is probably would pass for the same person. And this time we see differences in her eyebrows and her eyes and the freckles on her forehead and nose some of the lines and dimples, and certainly the overall lighting of the subject, which may be responsible for all of the fine detail refinements that we're seeing. Now let's see what happens when we use Creative Upscale. The resolution it produced is now 2,896 square. That's using version two. I've got the creativity set on 0.25. It definitely took the creative liberties. It's changed quite a bit in the background, in the lighting, the temperature of this image is just much warmer overall, but this really has made some significant changes to the face of the character. I'm not sure that the woman in the upscaled version would pass as the woman in the original version, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you have a situation where you've generated an image of a person or character and you're trying to fine tune that, you're not dead set on it being exactly this character with these exact qualities, then this creative upscale might help you hone in where you wanna be on what your character looks like. Now, if you're using an image, say, of yourself or someone else, a model, or even an image that you've created using AI, but you're sort of locked into anything you do with that image, it needs to be that person, that character, well, then creative upscale is probably not the way you want to go. But if you don't have that character defined yet, either in reality or in whatever project you're using, then the creative mode can be really handy for that. So here we are using creative mode with a creativity of 0.5. So this is halfway. It definitely made some changes to our subject, uh, to the background. And in this case, even if I didn't need this subject to appear the same as my original, I'm not so sure that I'm crazy about these changes. I think it went a little too far with the freckles in the same sort of freckle pattern that AI likes to just add to everybody when you say natural looking. And I feel like it left the eyes and teeth uh, kind of blurry, maybe even more than the original. Let's take a look at the creativity level set at 0.75. Again, we're using version two in creative upscale mode. This one, and I think 0.5 did the same thing. It sort of turned the subject's face more, more down and forward instead of up and a little bit to her right. It certainly added a lot of creative detail here. The overall lighting is entirely different and the eyes and teeth are kind of blurry in the upscale version. Now let's look at creative upscale using version one instead of version two. There's a very minor difference in the resolution. We get 2848 when we use version one, where we got 2896 when we used V2. Setting the creativity level at 0.25 or a quarter of what's available. Looks like we're doing different things with the hair. That's a complete change in the eyes. Now we've gone from brown eyes to blue eyes. We're making some big changes to the mouth and the nose. Look at her forehead as we swipe past this. Now we've added some blemishes there and I have no objection to blemishes. I much prefer that to the plastic supermodel looking things that we get so often from AI image generators. As we reveal the rest of the image, I think what we see is this girl is definitely not this girl. These are two different people. This could be really handy, again, if you're trying to dial in a character that you don't have established yet, or maybe you want a second character. You want the image to have a lot of similarity to the first one, but you actually do want a different character. Still in creative mode on version one, the creativity set at 0.5 definitely made some creative changes. And here's what we've got with creative mode, version one creativity set at 0.75. Some pretty significant changes there. This version even decided that the, in the background that shouldn't be a wall, but it should actually be another room back there. Now that's what the ultimate upscale modes look like with a photograph looking image of a person. And for those kinds of images, the creative upscale is really only handy if you're trying to develop a character or create a different character from an existing one. But this creative upscale mode has 
some more fun functionality when you work with something like a design or something abstract. For instance, take a look at whatever this mess is that I created. And here's what I got using Creative Upscale version two with creativity set at half, 0.5. And I went to 2,896 pixel square with this. I gave it nothing other than the original image. And I think that came out pretty cool. I actually like what it upscaled to better than what my original was. And that's kind of the idea. It's got a lot of the same vibe, but it's just better. But check this out. When I used Creative Upscale, set the creativity to 0.9. This is in V2 on the Creative Upscale mode. And I added a prompt. I said, bold cyberpunk neon. I didn't know what that was gonna create, but here's what I got. So there's my original. And here's the interpretation. Yeah, it's completely different. There's some hints of what was in the original, but I think that came out pretty darn cool. Then using Creative Upscale Mode version two, I kept the creativity at 0.9 and typed in the prompt brush strokes. And this is what it came up with. I can see the connection to my original image, but definitely a very creative interpretation and a change. Another way the creative upscale could come in really handy when it's okay to change things. Maybe you're trying to get just the right landscape or background or whatnot. Using creative upscale with a creativity set at 0.5, you got the desert, you got the sky, but it tweaked the temperature of the image. It added a lot of different things that weren't already there and it made some changes to some of the elements and details that were there. If you're using an image of a subject or character that can't be changed, precise upscale is the safest place to be. Use the refine mode if you want to add some minor details and enhancements, but keep that creativity level really low to prevent it from changing who the character is or what the subject is. And if there's things about your image, composition, or subject that you really like, but you need some different takes on it, then creative upscale is the way to go. And the farther you move that slider, the more creativity you're gonna get. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this helpful in some way, and I really hope you come back and see me in another video.